So you need a website and you want to use AI to help you make one. But with so many AI web building tools out there, how do you know which one's the best? I just used eight of the most popular ones out there. And in this video, I'm going to rank them all and tell you what the differences are between them so you know which ones aren't worth your time and which ones you should jump on right now. All right, so let's start off with one that sounds nice and familiar. It's GoDaddy, but now with AI. So the thing with pretty much all these tools is they start by asking you some questions about your business, and they're all different in terms of how much detail they ask for and how much they let you put in. GoDaddy asked some questions about my business goals, like if I wanted to use the site to book appointments and accept payments. It seemed like they were trying to tailor the experience, which is good. Then they asked an open-ended question of just, you know, tell me about your business. They give you 500 characters to do that. So I would recommend giving as much detail in any of these as you possibly can. What you offer, what makes you better or more unique than your competition. Maybe the benefits that your customers get when they work with you, that kind of stuff. So when it came to choosing sections for the site, GoDaddy gives you options, but it really assumes you already know what you need. And that might be tricky for someone new to building websites. And the customization process was where things got pretty frustrating. So it wasn't very intuitive at all. Trying to replace placeholder images or add new sections was way more complicated than it needed to be. And the options in the categories weren't clear, which made the whole process really hard. And they do offer some AI assistance for generating content but it's pretty basic. You can get suggestions for entire sections, but you can't really refine or customize the output. And as a result, the AI generated content seems to be pretty generic here. So in the end, the website that I got was functional, but not particularly impressive. You know, it met the basic needs, but didn't have that polish that you want, considering how important your website is for your business as a lead gen tool. So to sum it up, GoDaddy has some pros, the initial setup is thorough, and you do get some AI generated content, but the cons are pretty significant here. Customization's hard, and the AI contributions just aren't very deep. So considering all that, I'd have to put GoDaddy uh, Website Builder in the D tier. It gets the job done, but it's not great if you're looking for something that's easy to use and gives you high quality results. Okay, next up we have Mixo. So it started me out with some basic questions about my business and my goals. One thing that really stood out right away was its integration with Calendly. Now that's pretty cool because it lets you embed appointment scheduling right into your website. And none of the other tools that I'm gonna talk about did that. Now it also lets you upload a logo and choose your primary and secondary colors, which is nice, but here's the thing. It doesn't give you any AI generated color schemes or design guidance. I'd rather it give me like 10 color combo choices because if you're not a designer, picking the right colors from swatches and just kind of getting them to go well with each other, that's pretty hard to do for a non-designer and it's where a lot of newbies can really screw up the design. Now the initial layout here looks modern and clean, I'll give it that, but you're pretty much locked into this one specific style. I couldn't find an easy way to change the overall design, which let's face it, can be a problem if this style doesn't fit your business. They do have some AI driven content generation, but I found it to be pretty basic. For example, the AI generated headline was really generic and just didn't capture the specifics of the business at all and it doesn't really let you even choose images to use, you can just click reselect image and it makes a guess of what should go there, which I don't think is good enough. Let me choose my own images or make one using AI, please. Another issue I ran into here was I couldn't easily reorder sections or add any new ones. That is kind of a deal breaker, if you ask me. You gotta be able to add in sections for the content that you need to properly sell your services. So looking at the big picture here, Mixo has its strong points. You know, the Calendly integration is a nice touch and the modern aesthetic of the site is nice. The straightforward setup's also a plus. On the other hand, 
the rigid design style that you can't really change as far as I can tell, shallow AI generated content, and the difficulty of rearranging or adding sections are pretty big drawbacks. All in all, I'd put Mixo in the C tier. So it delivers on modern design and offers some useful integrations, but the lack of flexibility and limited AI definitely prevent it from getting any higher in the rankings. So if you're after a quick modern site and this particular style aligns with your vision, it could be a good fit for you. Okay, let's dive into Hoku's next. I think I'm saying that right. I've actually never heard of that one before today. So this one started off good, asking a bunch of detailed questions about my business, services, goals, even my unique selling points, the works. A lot of, a lot of detailed questions here. But the catch is when it came time to those USPs, I was stuck choosing from their predefined options. I would much rather be able to add in my own if I wanted to, because every business is gonna have different uh, USPs. So after answering all their questions, you get to choose from three templates and they were pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Um, they were definitely giving me homemade blogs straight out of 2006 energy. And even after playing around with color palettes and fonts, it only improved marginally. But the thing is, these tools are meant to be used by non-designers who just need something nice looking without having to override the system. So this was a complete miss. Now Hokus does try to incorporate some AI features. They've got this thing where you can choose different tones of voice for your content. Sounds good, right? Well, hold your horses because anything beyond the basic normal tone, it's locked behind a paywall. And when I did use the AI for content generation or redesign, the results were less than impressive. Let's just say that. I mean, they went to all the trouble of asking the name of my business and all this information about it, but it still fell back on calling it ABC accounting firm. So come on, what are you asking the questions for? As for images and sections, you can swap things out and add new bits, but don't expect any AI magic here. No generated images, no smart content suggestions. You're pretty much stuck with free stock photos, which let's be honest, often scream generic website from a mile away. So all that said, I've got to slot Hokus into the D tier. It starts off on the right foot with all those questions, but it stumbles pretty hard when it comes to actually delivering the goods with a website that looks good and represents your business. Okay, moving on now to Duda. This one took a different approach right out of the gate. So instead of diving into AI generated content, it had me pick a template based on my industry. And these templates look pretty good, I'll give them that. But it felt more like I was customizing a pre-made design rather than getting something, you know, uniquely crafted by AI. Once I got into the customization process, Duda gave me a lot of control. I could tweak pretty much everything, layouts, sections, content, you name it. But here's the thing, most of these changes were manual. You know, with an AI web builder, it's calling me crazy, but I was expecting the AI to do more of the heavy lifting, but it was mostly just me making um, manual adjustments myself. Now they do have an AI writing tool, which lets you put in all this info about your business and choose different tones of voice. But after filling all that out and choosing the conversational tone, it gave me the amazing, sure to bring all the leads to the yard headline of welcome to startup savvy accounting. Yeah, adding and editing sections was straightforward enough, but again, the AI wasn't really pulling its weight here. I found myself manually adjusting text, images, and layouts more often than not. It got the job done, but it was way more time consuming than I'd hoped and not really artificially intelligent, right? The whole process was a lot closer to traditional website building with a sprinkle of AI rather than a full on AI driven experience. So on the plus side, Duda gives you a lot of control over the design and the templates are professionally done. You can really get into the nitty gritty of customization if that's your thing. So taking all that into account, I'm putting Duda in the C tier. Now let's talk about 10 web AI builders. So this one took a very different approach right from the start. Um, after it asked for the usual info, industry, business name, all those questions, instead of jumping straight into the design like all the other ones did, 
it starts by creating a sitemap. So this was actually pretty cool because it gave me way more control over the structure of my website from the get-go. With the sitemap approach, I could add, delete, and move around sections and pages before even getting to the design phase. It's like being able to sketch out the blueprint of your website before you start building, which honestly is much more in line with how you really should be creating a website. You wanna start with the content before you get to the design. And the customization uh, during setup was pretty impressive too. I could click on any section, ask the AI to enhance the content or even add new sections wherever I wanted. For example, I threw in a benefit section between two existing ones, just like that. Now, when it comes to AI integration, TenWeb does a decent job. You know, you can use AI to beef up your content or generate new stuff based on what you tell it. And before you generate the final website, you get to pick font pairings, colors, and styles. It's just really nice to get a preview of how everything's gonna look. And one big plus is that TenWeb uses Elementor, which is a really powerful WordPress page builder. That means you've got tons of customization options at your fingertips. But fair warning, if you're new to Elementor, there's definitely a bit of a learning curve Nothing a 20 minute video on YouTube couldn't teach you, but it's just, it's a, it's a little bit beyond your typical AI website builder. So what was the end result? I honestly got a pretty good looking website that's highly customizable, especially if you know your way around Elementor. So weighing it all up, I didn't know if we'd have one of these, but 10Web lands in the S tier for me. It offers great control and customization, making it one of the best uses of AI website creation because it lets you focus on the content before the design, which is just refreshing and not what any of the other guys are doing. Okay, next up, let's talk about Zero by Hostinger. Once again, you give it the basic info about your business, including a brief description um, of what you do. And this one actually gives you the most space to give it info about your business. You have a thousand characters for the description. Ideally, it should take this and use it to make the right kind of site for you. Now, I will say the initial design that Zero spits out is actually pretty slick. I got a hero section with the video background, which gives the site a, a nice modern engaging feel right off the bat. But as with a lot of these AI builders, the content and layout are pretty generic. Customization wise, Zero gives you some wiggle room. You can add and move sections around, which is handy. But here's where things get a little disappointing. So the AI writing tool didn't really work when I tried it. I tried to get it to generate some content about common business challenges and it just gave me an error, basically. So you might be on your own in the writing department until they get those bugs worked out. One cool feature that Zero has is AI image generation. Weirdly enough, I didn't really see that on most of these other ones. But before you get too excited, they only give you one free AI generated image. After that, you're gonna be paying for each additional image which is kind of weird because AI generation um, tools online, there's a lot of them that are free. So it's kind of strange they make you pay for the images. It's a nice touch to have, but the limitation could be a bummer if you're looking to really customize your visuals. Overall, using Zero is a pretty smooth experience, especially if you know, you're more concerned with looks than in-depth content. It's easy to get a good looking site up and running, but if you need more detailed or nuanced messaging, which I, recommend that you do need that, you'll probably find yourself doing a fair bit of manual work there. So I'm gonna put zero in the B tier. All right, let's talk about Elementor's AI Builder. So I've been using Elementor as my own page building tool for years now, and it's always been really solid. It's what I recommend um, almost all the time. So when I heard about their AI Builder, I was pretty excited to give it a shot. But here's the deal. So Elementor's AI Builder isn't a standalone website generator like most of the others on the list. It's supposed to enhance the existing Elementor page builder with AI-driven features. Sounds cool, right? Well, there's a catch because you need both an Elementor Pro subscription and their additional AI subscription, making it definitely the priciest option 
that we're looking at today. And in theory, this tool should help with generating layouts, selecting styles, and creating text. But in practice, let's just say it didn't quite live up to my expectations. The biggest issue I had was just how buggy the whole thing was. I don't even need to get into specifics there. It just straight up wouldn't connect. I didn't even get to use one thing with AI at all using it. Now I'm all for being patient with new tech, but this was next level frustrating, especially when you consider how much you're paying for it. So you'd expect a premium experience, but instead it felt like I was beta testing something that just wasn't even ready for release. Long story short, I got in touch with our support team yesterday and I have yet to have a solution for it. So let's just break it down on the plus side. Well, the concept's interesting, right? And regular Elementor is still great, but the cons, buggy, unreliable, expensive, and from what I can tell, it has pretty limited image generating options and it doesn't even build your whole site for you, just one section at a time. So I hate to do this, but I've got to put Elementor AI Builder in the F tier. So it's not just underperforming, it's basically unusable right now. So my advice is if you like Elementor, stick with regular Elementor um, if you want to build a site, but don't even bother with their AI features until they've worked out all the kinks. It's a shame, I wanted to like this one, but it's uh, definitely not ready for prime time yet. Okay, next on the table is Brizzy or Breezy. Not sure how you say it, but this one starts off pretty basic. Same questions, except these ones are pretty minimal. And honestly, it felt like they were collecting data for themselves rather than trying to customize my site. Then it gave me this site. Maybe one of the most boring looking ones I got back in this whole experiment. But how was it to use and customize? Not great. Honestly, the interface relies really heavily on icons that aren't intuitive at all. It's difficult to figure out how to perform the simplest tasks like changing the background or layout. You kind of have to guess. And customization is possible, but again, it's not straightforward. You really need to know your way around design software to make any meaningful changes here. So not user-friendly, especially if you're a beginner. And the AI features are pretty weak too. There's no AI generated images, which is disappointing. And the AI writing tool isn't very helpful. Um, when I tried to get it to edit a headline, the results were borderline incoherent. After working with Brizzy for a bit, I ended up with a website that still looked really outdated and just not appealing at all. So the whole process is more difficult than it needed to be, especially considering how little help I got from the AI. So if I had to sum up the Brizzy experience, I'd say it was frustrating. Unless you're already experienced with web design, you're really gonna struggle to get the results you want. And if you know web design, use something else, use Elementor. So what's good about Brizzy? Well, you can customize things if you can figure it out. And that's about it for the pros. And the cons we've talked about, the templates are outdated, the AI is next to useless, and the interface is not user-friendly at all. So all things considered, Brizzy is going into the D tier. So here's the big picture thing to remember here. Your website is actually really important to your business. It can bring in leads on autopilot, and if it's done right, it can persuade them to take that next step with you, filling your client pipeline. So there is a way of using AI to help you, but after using all these tools, I don't think it's in a one-step setup like these are. But you can still get the whole thing done in an afternoon if you follow my step-by-step -step AI website creation plan in this video. So trust me when I say, this is the best way to use AI to help you get the kind of website that's really gonna make a meaningful difference in your business. So click right here and I'll show you exactly what you need to do.